it. Yeah, I, I think nice it's mode. fine. Yeah, it's yeah. a, nice, a nice little tone. Are we all working now? We're all yep, good? Yep, we are hot. All right. Welcome to Sobo Radio. We're bringing you booze, reviews, and more. I'm Mike. I'm Jake. And today we are sitting down with brewer and owner of Dog Rose Brewing Company in St. Augustine, Florida, Doug Murr. How you doing today, Doug? Doing well. I'm doing well. Thanks for uh, coming in today. No problem. We appreciate you having us on. We just really wanted to come down and uh, get your little background and some story on Dog Rose. <laughs> it's, a, uh, it's a bit of a story, I guess. So most people, I think, by now are pretty aware uh, I worked with A1A Ale Works, uh, which is just right up the street here uh, since 2001, running their brewery. Uh, that was part of a bigger company, which is what a lot of people don't understand. Uh, when I left, we had about 200 units. <clears throat> it was a, uh, you know, it was a great company to work for. I learned a lot. I brought a lot of that corporate side with me to help run this business. Right. Yeah. Um, as far as the brewing process, you know. We add water, right? And <laughs> fun, right? So that, that's relatively simple. Um, but as it all panned out, I was ready to move on. So I was actively either looking for another job or try to put a deal together. Okay. Just about then through a lease negotiation with their landlords, they decided to get rid of the brewery. So that worked out for me in that I was able to buy this equipment that I maintained for the past yeah. 16, 17 years and no intimately uh not to mention i didn't have to fly anywhere to look at it i didn't have to ship it anywhere uh, and yeah, that's store a bonus. It right in house um, and that with the severance package was really filled that gap of, of, of what we had and what we needed to get doggers off the ground awesome yeah i'm sure that's got to be a big advantage having the equipment right on because i heard that's the most expensive part of starting a brewery anywhere is well yeah it's a huge capital investment right uh and, and obviously anytime we can buy anything used is great Right, I mean, the, yeah. it's always going to be a little better, provided you know it. You're always rolling the dice with used equipment. Not to mention, I would have had to fly all over the country just to go look at stuff just to find it all. Yeah. Right, and in this market right now, it is not a buyer's market. You know, I mean, there's there's not a whole lot of used equipment out there, yeah. and what's out there is not as as, as uh, inexpensive as you would think in, in in relation to new equipment. Right, so we definitely it worked out really well for That's us. That's great, nice. So my question for you is, how'd you pick the name Dog Rose? <laughs> If I had a dollar, I'd just close, <laughs> just close up shop tomorrow and we'd be done. Um, so it's a little bit of a sordid story, but I will tell you. So we, we had this great name lined up, my wife and I, Courtney. And uh, it was so great as we started researching it, we realized there was a lot of them, right? There was a laundromat. There was a theater, a winery. There might have even been a brewery with this name that we really liked. And it was important. It, it was something, uh, you know, with some Florida relevance, but not – pigeonholing us yeah. into just florida right it's right. not relevant anywhere else so we were back to the drawing board we really spent a lot of time and energy trying to figure it out and we realized through a few different names that are out there uh, if you could think of one very successful brewery with arguably the worst name ever uh dogfish head oh yeah <laughs> yeah let me take a second just say it you out realize how horrible yeah. it is and that took all the pressure off and we realized, like, nobody gives a shit what the <laughs> name is, really. You know, you say it three times, and then that's it. You're going to yeah. dog rose. You're not analyzing it every time you say it. You just say it. And that's where you go, and that's what you're drinking. And as long as you put out a good product. Fish, right? Yeah, exactly. Nobody, nobody thinks about what it is anymore. And you might have once, and then you just kept saying it, and that was that. If, We're done. If it's after yeah. that, yeah. So, <laughs> so, so the pressure was off. But besides that, it is, it is a wild rose. Uh, it's really prevalent in Europe. Uh, there are quite a few here. In fact, one of our dear friends has one in their backyard. Oh, that's cool. It's um, not very attractive. It's tenacious, mildly invasive. So it's, <laughs> so it's pretty apropos for us. That's great. <laughs> so uh, did you guys just happen to fall in this spot uh, out of randomness, or were you kind of keeping your eye open for a spot over in, like, Lincolnville area? Or? Yes and no. You know, we, we knew we didn't want to be, you know, on St. George yeah. or I don't care how local you are. It's very difficult to really, for the locals to feel like you're local when you're, yeah. you know, it, uh, not to dig anybody. Out yeah. There, you know, it's, it's part of who we are. But we uh, we looked anywhere and everywhere for a space. And uh, quite literally, uh, it's funny you kind of say it the way you did, quite literally, it did fall in our laps. I mean, a broker <laughs> I was working with just kind of walked into the brewery at A1A and threw the the pamphlet on my desk <laughs> while I was sitting there. And we started looking at it and started negotiating and working. 
uh, you know, and, and nobody wanted the building. This was a, this was a, not an easy place to start. And if you keep in mind, you know, just as little as three years ago, you know, where the preserved is. You, yeah, there was yeah, nothing over here. True. True. But there was something over there, but. Yeah, <laughs> not, not that you come to. <laughs> you know, over there, I'll yeah. tell you that. Uh, same with the collector. So now we're, we're flanked by, you know, arguably the nicest hotel in the city. Oh, yeah. And the nicest restaurant in the city. Um, and the city, I think, is recognizing that this is, is where a lot of growth is coming. The neighborhood is certainly glad to see it. Uh, and so a lot of our surroundings, the city is, is starting to realize, like, this isn't a great place for some of these activities. And they've really worked hard with us to get this yeah. area cleaned up. And uh, just in a year and a half, really, I guess since we started, probably going on two years, it's night and day yeah. around here. My uh, girlfriend actually lives on Dumas, and it's, like, awesome for us because we just walk right here and we come down and get a drink. And yeah, it's, yeah. it's perfect location. <laughs> there you go. I think to segue into that, too, your, like, atmosphere in here is great. I want to know about the artwork on the walls and the posters and where um, do you get them from? And Yeah, well, that, that's good. Uh, so the art is just what, you know, it's like you buy art for your house, whatever strikes your, your eye, yeah. right? Right, but right. These, these here, that the, the, the middle one with the birds – uh, we saw it in Art Walk, and I, I, I don't know, it just spoke to me, so I had to have it. And it turns out it was a friend of ours, and she oh, realized awesome. that it was being hung in a in a public space, which I would imagine as an artist is... Big deal. It's, yeah. a, it's the best thing ever, yeah. right? I mean, your art's still on display, but somebody bought it, too. It's not just in somebody's living room. Uh, so she came to see it and told me she had two more in the same oh, series. Cool. So we bought the other two. Uh, the big palm tree, which has kind of become synonymous with, with dog rose... Uh, was a loan for us and it was well outside of our budget it was loaned to us by plum gallery um and we really enjoyed it and it just fills that wall perfectly it's almost like this imaginary window there and uh somebody started sniffing around wanting to buy it really really and they started getting serious and it was expensive enough that you don't just decide you want it right <laughs> yeah. you know like they came in like three days in a row really looking at it i knew they were getting serious um, and that's when I realized we just couldn't let that happen. Yeah. So we bought it, you know. So <laughs> you know, we, had to, we had to keep it. So as far as the concert posters go, uh, they, you know, one rule is that it's a show we went to. Okay. Right? I mean, we don't just buy posters because they're cool looking or whatever. And they've all got some sort of, um, some story behind them that we, uh, which is why we got it, you know. Like I'm, I'm looking at the fish poster by the front door there, and it, it really was an unremarkable show. Uh, as you guys know, I'm a big fish fan, but <laughs> it was my it was my oldest son's first fish show. Okay, uh, that's so cool. it really had some real resonance. Uh, you know, the By Morning Jacket was one of the loudest concerts ever. And it was just <laughs> great. And even the Ray Lamontagne, for people who don't know, you know, he got really sonic there for a while, and By Morning Jacket was his backup band. So he wasn't crooning, you know, Ray that everybody came to see. I mean, people were leaving all night. It was a pretty psychedelic, awesome really? show. And we were just so, you know, so proud of him for, uh, yeah, as an artist. Right, right. Really branching out and, 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 and be damned the fans a little bit to do, you know, what his art's drawing yeah. to do. Yeah, no, that's awesome. Uh, so we're excited. We've got a couple more. We've got three more at the shop. Uh, that we pick up this week oh, that we're being in. framed. So we're nice. excited. Uh, there you one go. of which I, I will spoil uh, was a, uh, we didn't realize it was going to be one of his last shows, but uh, we saw Tom Petty before oh, really? we opened down in Tampa in 17. Oh, so cool. we didn't buy a poster at the show, but uh, we started, you know, obviously it became a little more uh, relevant. Yeah. So we uh, we scoured everywhere. We just found it. And so it's at the frame shop now. We're That's excited. awesome. That's, a, that, That's great. So yeah, cool. yeah, it's going to be a nice yeah, one. Yeah, that'll be sweet. I just love the open floor plan too you guys have in here. It's really good. You can really come in. We were playing darts, what, two weekends ago? Yeah. We were in here. We were having a good time. People were coming up playing with us. It was great. That's something I think you guys have. Everywhere else down here gets really congested. And um, when you're busy, I'm sure, it gets a little congested. But you also have a big enough space where everybody can see what you're doing in the back. They can come in, play some darts, get a good look, good beer, everything like that. So that's something I really appreciate when I come down here. Yeah, we, we certainly got lucky with the space. You know, it's uh, it, with the high ceilings and the open. I mean, it was it was an art gallery, which was a blessing and a curse. Uh, you know, because we didn't hire a designer or anything. So, mm -hmm. it, it started with the bar, then the base of the bar, and then the wall colors, and everything just kind of slowly rolled. You know, and um, I mean, so many times I just you know 
wished we had like one brick wall to work off of, you know, just like something, you know, yeah. it was just this big white blank canvas, you know, uh, but with the space, it does make it nice where we can, uh, you know, we can have a really a lot of people in here. Oh, yeah. They're yeah. still pretty comfortable yeah. because of the high ceilings and uh, you can still feel. Yeah. I mean, you guys just popped up a stage. Not a, lo- <laughs> not a lot of breweries can do that. Not a lot of them yeah, have the space. Well, well, we put it at, you know, we also put it away, right? Because we need that space right, right. where the bands aren't playing. So. That's awesome. So tell us a little bit about all the beers. I know it's a big thing uh, for breweries to kind of tie it back, <laughs> you know, to the scene and to, uh, you know, the brewery name a little bit, tie it all together. What what, uh, what inspires you on the beers? Uh, well, you know, so our, our top four there are kind of our flagship beers, and uh, it's important to have that little bit of continuity and that, that um, for people to know that they're going to come in and get that Rainbow on Red or the Lingaville Lager, Longer, and that's what they come for. Um the lager, it's you know, you know, it's really important. I think that we have. It turns out to be one of our our biggest sellers, right? Okay. And it's right. A, uh, it's a great. Uh, I don't even want to say an introductory beer because it's pretty robust. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's pushing thirty BUs. It's almost a, 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 a pills, right? But it is a, a way for people to come in and be a part of the craft scene without having to have this big chewy IPA or, you know, whatever the hell it may be, a stout. Um, so those top four are pale, our IPA, and our red, and our lager are our flagships, and we, we have those all the time. Um, as far as the others, uh, you know, I've always been a little bit of a cowboy when it came to brewing um, and will fly by the seat of my pants a good deal. Um, a, a case in point, the uh, Sunshine Daydream, uh, we mashed in. My, my assistant was working with me, and Nick, he's, he's learning a lot, and he's going to be a real asset at some point. Um, and we mashed in this wheat and I'm like, all right, well, let's go take a walk and find some inspiration. So we walked over to the spice shop and I don't know if you've ever gone over there, but you can open everything and you can smell and you can oh, put things cool. together oh, awesome. and look and just, you know, whatever. And so we're over there and I, I was looking at all kinds of different things. And next thing you know, we decided and we came back and now it's a, uh, orange blossom honey, which we had a little bit in house, hibiscus and ginger wheat. That's, that's awesome. so cool. <laughs> and that that's was so a, cool. that was a, uh, an audible, if you will, you know, yeah. at the line. So, uh, and that's what makes it fun. Uh, I'm a well aware if, if, if all goes well and we continue on the right path and we, we follow that, that path, if that's the way we go with more distribution and getting bigger, um, those days will be gone. You know, maybe we'll be sitting around one day and I'll be reminiscing about when we used to be able to do that. Mm-hmm. And I have meetings about having meetings <laughs> about what the year's going to be, um, and so I try to embrace that and do that as often as possible and just have fun. I'm a huge fan of your, your stout. The separate stout is awesome. No, it is it. delicious. Every time I come, it's the first thing I start off with. Um, do, you, do you get any of your ingredients locally or anything like that, or is it more just kind of what you find and you like what you bring in to brew with? Yeah, uh, not, not a ton. I mean, it, it's – I'm not opposed to it. I mean, I'm also a creature of habit. Yeah. I mean, I've used the same malt for 20 years. Okay. Yeah, right. And I Stick have with maltsers come in yeah. all the time. And, and it, chances are it could be a, a, a far superior product. I, you know, I don't know, but I am just a, uh, I'm a creature of habit. And I've ordered the same <laughs> yeah, malts. I mean, I'll bring in some fun specialty malts, you know, to, to toy around with, whether it be smoke or, you know, whatever. Yeah. But, um, no, I don't. I don't get to use too many local ingredients. We have toyed with some hyper local honey to work with, but uh, to get enough, yeah, can be daunting for some, yeah, of, these, uh, some of these local beekeepers, right? You got a question? No, I was just gonna say I love the uh, the dead roses sour. That uh, ah. oh, it's so good. It's so good. <laughs> that was actually another audible. Uh, it's kind of a game day decision, <laughs> and um, we I wanted to do a sour. But I wasn't sure what it was going to be. And, and when we brewed it, you know, there's there's no fruit really in season outside of citrus, which yeah. really makes my back teeth sweat. Just thinking <laughs> about a citrus sour. But um, so obviously we can get whatever fruit we want whenever we want. We we live in America yeah. in the 21st century. We get whatever we want. Uh, but it doesn't really speak genuine to me. Uh, but you need that sweet or something to work with the sour. Uh, so we decided to go use our malt. Right, so it's a big malt bomb, you know. A Flanders inspired, <laughs> inspired red with that playful acidity on it really, really helps break yeah. that up and, and keep it light and enjoyable, right? Yeah, it's perfect. What's your favorite? I don't mean to 
put you in a corner. Yeah, but. no, I mean, I, I get asked that all the time. Um, I, I don't know that I have a favorite per se. I do tend to just reach with the IPA tap every time I reach with a tap. Um, <laughs> but I, I try to make a point of moving around. And uh, what's really helpful for me, even after all these years, it'll happen. You know, maybe you're out of the IPA for an hour or two, right, because you're moving it over, you're carbonating. So you try some other beers, right? Maybe it's a whole night. And next thing you know, you're like trying beers that you haven't tried in forever. Even though you're, right, you're yours, though you're, right? Yeah, they're your beer. And uh, this is going to sound kind of braggadocious, I guess. But sometimes I'll, you know, like say it's the red, right? That's not really my style of beer, but it is for a lot of people. I don't just brew for myself. Sometimes I'll sit there and I'll drink it. I'm like, shit, I get why people do <laughs> <That's pretty good. laughs> Damn, that's, that's good. That's pretty good. <laughs> right? And, and uh, I think that's fair to say, I guess, right? Uh, so I don't know that I have a favorite. Uh, I do tend to drink IPAs. It tends to be, you know, my go-to whenever I go out, whether it's mine or somebody else's, right? Yeah, yes. for sure. Yeah. How, how often do you guys brew? And every like three times a week, four or something like that, or what is no, it? No, no, not at the moment. So we brew in a uh, ten barrel system, okay. right? So we've got three ten barrel fermenters and three twenty barrel fermenters. Uh, one blessing, uh, which is kind of a, 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 a not too many people have it. None of these young younger breweries much but we have bright tanks so i've got uh three 20 barrel bright tanks and seven <laughs> bait of my existence seven seven barrel grundies which are horrible to work with but each one rep- represents you know 14 kegs which Dang. is 14 kegs that i don't have to clean move store shuffle around right yeah so i tend to brew a, a handful of seven barrel batches for a one-offs uh, okay. Just because they fit one tank, and I can kind of fill all those tanks, versus taking up two, you know, with one of them with only three barrels in it. Uh, so, with that said, right now everything we're consuming is on premise. So, uh, brewing at those capacities, you know, I don't have to brew four days a week, right? But we are we're averaging about two brews a week, you okay. know, which is which is pretty reasonable. Yeah. Uh, we are looking into uh, you know little distribution around town draft oh, accounts cool. okay uh, and so we're looking at which beers you know, which beers the market will support right now and what would be our best foot forward right uh, so that will definitely ramp up production that's awesome you, know, you think that's kind of the next big step is uh starting drafts around town and yeah yeah i mean i i don't, even, I don't think it's a big of a step it's just a you know it's the it's natural progression that's yeah. right it's just the natural progression and and we'd always had that in mind. The idea was, though, to figure out, uh, A, figure out our beers. You know, is the, does the Lincolnville Lager have legs? You know, I mean, is that something people really do want to drink? I believed in it. And as it turns out, I was right. You know, it's one of our <laughs> biggest sellers, right? If not the biggest a lot of times. Uh, sometimes as much as 18% of our, of our mix, right, our product mix. But um, we wanted to see how much beer do we need here? Right, and and so that we're not promising a distributor X amount of beer, which means that's all we're doing. Yeah. And you guys come in here, and I've got the same three beers on because that's all I can keep up with to feed the, sure. the, the you know the beast. Uh, so it's um, we've taken our time. You know, it's been, we're going on a year and a half, and it'll be a good time to get you know, ready, start right. and start some small draft counts around town, and try to find some forever homes, and maybe a couple of homes for. They just want a rotating tap of, of our one-offs, whether it be the Dead Roses or, you know, the Sunshine Daydream. Who knows, right? That's yeah. awesome. I mean, you got anything else? Or uh, I think uh, we pretty much covered unless, all our questions. Unless you got anything, yeah. I'll open up the floor to you if you got anything. Uh, no, no. I mean, we're just, you know, I appreciate you guys having us, and, and, and we're really excited to be part of the community. You know, one thing Dog Rose, you know, besides, you know, beer and music drinking and darts <laughs> <laughs> shuffleboard we uh in all seriousness we 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 take our responsibility as a as a local company uh, very seriously and we try to stay as active civically as we can we do as many charities as we can get involved with uh, that's awesome in fact we we, we just had a, a talk my wife and i the other day and you know going forward all these donations i mean we get hit for kegs i mean daily right and, and swag or whatever it is well, like, you know, well, what's the charity? And you'd be amazed at how many are not charities or anything. You know, just you know, it's the better their event or whatever. Yeah. And it's like, well, we, you know, we have to say no somewhere. Got to draw your line right, somewhere. Exactly. That seems like a reasonable line to me. You know, yeah. so so we we try to do as much as we can with the charities and, and and donate and get active with the community. And we encourage our our people to do that as well. You know, and, that's and, awesome. Uh, yeah. Hopefully, we can make some differences. Right. 
yeah. it's great. It helps some people. Do you have any like uh, social media handles you want to shout out? Anybody? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we're on Facebook. We're on uh, Instagram. Right. I don't think we do Twitter. It's hard enough for my wife and I to keep up with those two. And you know, we're uh, yeah, we've got our web page. Uh, a big thing I, I guess I should mention is what we're really excited about right now is the uh, St. Augustine Brewers Festival that okay. we're putting together. Uh, Courtney and I have worked really hard. The VCB has brought this idea to us. Uh, Matt at Old Coast is really playing a nice role with this too. And we're we're putting this whole thing together. It's going to be May 11th at the Fountain of Youth. Awesome. <clears throat> Tickets are going relatively quickly. Uh, we've handpicked uh, breweries from around the state. That's awesome. So this is not, you know, a, a, a distributor fest where you go and you see all these national brands. These are all small breweries that we've picked that you don't typically see in this market. If you do, it's a, you know, a fleeting glimpse of them, you know, coming through some cool beer stop that you go to. Yeah. Um, and we encourage, they're going to bring representatives so it's not just going to be some sales rep that doesn't know anything about the beer or even worse, care about the beer. Yeah. You're going to have somebody really there. And it's, it's going to prove to be a great event. Where can you pick up some tickets for that? Well, you can go to the stabrewersfest.com okay. website, and that will show you all the, uh, the link to all the breweries that are going to be there. And each brewery has a link so that you can go to their thing. There's also a ticket portal there. That Very ticket, cool. You just do them right online. We've got two tickets. There's a general admission ticket, which is $40. Um, and that's going to get you the commemorative glass and the tastings for four hours and the music in, I mean, truly a beautiful setting. And the, and the oh, Fountain yeah. of Youth yeah, has redone gorgeous. that whole thing. It's, it's incredible. Now, we've also got a very limited VIP package. Uh, we can only sell 100 of these, and they're going relatively quickly. Uh, they're $100, but you're going to get you know your, your entry to the fest. You're going to get in an hour early. You're also going to get guaranteed on-site parking in a private parking lot. You get uh, exclusive access to their new pavilion that they've done that's uh, air-conditioned uh, and private bathrooms. Once you're in the pavilion, there's also a buffet set up for you all day, and the distillery is going to be there doing some private uh, bourbon tastings as well. Wow, Ooh, that's, that's awesome. awesome. Yeah. yeah, it's quite that's a package. That's, tickets. that's what a lot of people are kind of jumping on. It's yeah. almost worth it just for the parking. <laughs> 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 well, you know, we just put a deal together with Velo, too, so they're going to have uh, their uh, – whatever their bike racks out there right oh, for you and they, they lock them and watch them and everything so you could park wherever you wanted and bike in and we really encourage it you know again uh, i used to live in that neighborhood and there's a lot of fine folks over there and we need to treat them you know with due respect uh and 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 still have a good time yeah, yeah but sure. we're, we're used to the parking around here right? yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, you know if you're going to it event, you just go and you deal yep. with it and you do it and if you ride a bike you ride a bike yeah you know? yeah That'd be awesome. Yeah, yeah, it's gonna be a great event. Awesome. That yeah, sounds awesome. Yep, yep. Well, we appreciate it, Doug. Thank you for uh, coming and joining us today, yeah, and thanks man. for having us in. We Absolutely. really appreciate it. Yeah, you definitely it. appreciate Cheers. what you do here. It's been yeah. uh, excellent. So oh, well, thank yeah. you, man. I appreciate yeah. it. It's awesome, and we'll be back later tonight. To check out the band for sure. <laughs> <laughs> for yeah, sure. Great. You're gonna have a good time with Wes King. Yeah. Great. Awesome. All right, guys. Dog Rose Brewing Company, St. Augustine, Florida. Come check them out. They're great. All right. Cheers. All right. Cheers. All right. Cheers. <laughs>